Hey, welcome back to Broker Talk. I'm Larry Lawford, your host each week. Today, you're going to find out all the answers to your real estate questions. And fortunately, we have a guy who has been at it for more than 40 years. He's written books about it. He's got podcasts. Um, he's the CEO of Castles Unlimited and now has one of the biggest teams in um, EXP Realty. Castles Luxury. Hey, welcome, Jim. In in real estate oh, in the world. Time. And welcome to the Exponential Files. Yay! Uh, Jim is the uh, host of the Exponential Files. Um, and um, they get Doing together. Doing podcasts today. Well, it's a show like this, you know, uh, people talking. Well, um, when, we, when we started the Exponential Files, it was just you and me for like the first 10 episodes talking about EXP. Yeah. Yeah. And there's there's an incredible lot to talk about uh, there. But let's give the audience what they want. They, you know, the top 20 questions. And and I looked in Google and Redfin and Zillow and, you know, everybody's giving you information. Having information is not the problem with buying and selling real estate. Having good information, having somebody you can talk to has been there, has done it. So, um um, let's start with buyers, Jim. Uh, what's the first step in home buying? Make sure you got the money. <laughs> yeah. No, no, seriously. I mean, yeah. uh, get, get your financing in, in, in order and then <clears throat> know exactly what you want so you're not wasting your broker's time uh, mm -hmm. and your own time. And and the reason for that is you cannot make an offer anywhere in the United States right now without a pre-approval. So the, when you're showing the buy, uh, the seller that you want to buy their house, you also want to show them what you what you can do and how you can do it. And and that's the pre-approval, pre-qualification. So yeah, get your get your finances in line. And and and, uh, and, and speak to more than one broker. Um, yeah. Try to avoid um, yeah. big banks like Bank of America or whatever. Right. If I see Bank of America, I just say, no, find somebody else. They're never going to do the deal. Well, They'll give you a piece of paper that says they will, but then. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, it, that's a little uh, deeper dive. What we're really talking about is where you're getting your money from. Um, loan products, mortgages are products. They're sh like shoes. Do you want the fast and and and, uh, or do you want the really beautiful high heels that make you look beautiful? Um, you want you want a lender that's going to close. Next question. Um, what you what you want to do is talk to enough people so you know uh, you've got a good product that fits you. Um, should you do a home inspection? I think we both would say absolutely. Unless you're going to tear it down. Yeah, unless you're tearing it down. Or unless it's so bad, it's clearly something that you have to replace everything in it anyway. And then yeah. you're kind of wasting your money. Well, you, I, I know with Castle's Luxury that that um, which you're the team uh, captain for all of that. I don't know if that's your title. You're the big. The, uh, I'm, I'm I'm the uh, team leader. Yeah. Um, that um, luxury properties are different than regular properties. There's a different language to it. There's a different process. One of the questions here is how long uh, will it take for me? How many houses should I look at? before before I buy I, it, it, it's really up to uh, the buyer and uh, the marketplace I mean there may only be two or three houses that fit a buyer's need and they probably are going to look at the best house first so they'll probably basically come back to the house they saw first and buy it there are although although the the, the favorite trick in the industry is you show the worst houses first and then you show the best house. Yeah, but I think the way the market's been in most recently is that you see the houses when they come on the market because they're if it's if a house is correctly priced, it's going to get lots of traffic because the consumer has too many things to look at to to for somebody to put an overpriced house on and expect to get anything like that. Um, right now, the trend is different and, and it, it goes in cycles, you know, ups and downs. Um, 
How do you see it? Do you think interest rates are coming down? Uh, eventually, probably yeah. second half of the year, they'll come down a little bit. Uh, probably not that much. I don't think that much either because they still need to control the inflation. Um, and we've got an election coming up. So they're, uh, I know they aren't directly related, but somehow well, everything's it, it, directly well, related. If, if you watch Jay Powell on Sunday night on 60 Minutes, he clearly said um, we're, we're, there's nothing political in our decision making. And I absolutely believe him, regardless of all the people that would say something to the contrary. Right. I mean, it, it, it's it's. It, it's it's too important to get it right to start yeah. mixing politics into it on top of everything else. But uh, our big problem is the deficit. Yeah. You know, inflation compared yeah. to the deficit is not the problem. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't want to be you don't want to use all your money because when you get into your house, you're going to have to do stuff. You'll you'll paint, you'll, you know, buy new pillows. Uh always pillows uh, i'm talking about the the country's deficit uh, i think the, oh yeah the, the number was a million dollars in debt for the next generation for every household is built into the current yeah deficit it's pretty it's scary some, stuff yeah some of that is just hard to even comprehend because um the, the other part is you know the houses that we bought 20 years ago were a third of what their value is now. They've just gone up and up. And well, up. then you want inflation to, to run away. That that way, if your dollar is worth nothing and you bought yeah. real estate, you'll you'll keep up with it. Yeah. If if there's an or Bitcoin, if there's an equivalency, um, one of the, my guilty pleasures is watching the uh, um, this house. It's a a thing on the internet somewhere and, he, and they show um, gilded age homes. And I just love all that stuff. And and uh, that was such a specific period of time. It was gilded age homes that were New York and Newport and all of that. Uh, incredible. Um, uh, even out in California. Anyway, um, Google, when I looked at Google, they, um, they had more kind of... Uh, for instance, the, the question was, what's the purpose of inspecting my home? And um, we said you should do it. But what what's the purpose? What do you find out with a home inspection? Who knows? Age of the roof, whether your foundation's leaking. Yeah, you know, pretty much everything. You have to do on the heating system. Yeah. Drafty windows, no insulation, could be anything. Anything and everything, what they do. Uh, but, the but let's let's face it, because all of those low interest mortgages are locking people into their houses. Because who wants to trade a three and a half for a six and a half or a seven, sure. or seven and a half or whatever the day's rate is? Because it does fluctuate. Most people buying new houses because that's the only thing that's there. Right. Right. We, uh, and specifically the low inventory. And then if you yeah. have a new house, I mean, what, what's, a, what's an inspection going to turn up? Uh, your town or your city already did a whole bunch of inspections on it. So it's not a bad idea to go through a house with an inspector. They'll tell you the little secrets on how to caulk a tub by filling it up and having it you know, drop down a little bit. So when you drain the water, it compresses the caulk. You know, silly things like that. But you know, and then they give you a book. Here's here's your handbook. You know, every every quarter you're gonna change the battery and the uh, sure. and the smoke detector, and no one ever does it. You know, stuff like that. Maybe once a year, but no, well, um, not when it beeps, that's when you change it. Right, <laughs> right. Well, the real reason to, to to do a home inspection, you should, is because it tells you everything about the house. It tells you about, you know, the infrastructure and how it works and exactly what you're you're saying, Jim, how, how to keep it healthy. Because when you buy a house, you My have- My recommendation is everyone in, in their life should build one house. Mm -hmm. If you can, build one house. You'll know every last detail, right down to the last nail, last- piece of wood 
everything. Yeah. Quite an experience if you can do it. Better yeah. than driving cross country. Yeah. I don't know. I've done that a bunch Stories of you can tell. Um, can a homeowner decline the offer I present? There's three choices. Yes. There's only one yes. choice. Yes, yes, no, and counter. No. That's no, always you, the way it is. You you ask and they reject it. Yes. Yeah. Go, go. Or you ask and they counter, and you counter that. Usually goes back two or three times. I showed a house last week. They had a full price offer the day before, and they decided at that point we're taking it off the market. And we're going to raise the price 55000 but we're not going to put it on now. We're going to wait till March. That's a strategic move that the consumer thinks that's just the right thing. And maybe, maybe not, you know. Um, I mean, I, I, th I thought it was priced right, but that house is going to be worth more probably in a month anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what methods do real estate agents employ to determine my house's worth. What do you uh, use? I mean, I'm an augment big RPR guy and then scouring the internet. What do you do? Uh, I look at what's on the market and what is sold usually in the last yeah. six to 12 months, depending on, you know, yeah. whether it is a lot of comps or a few comps. And if there's no comps at all, you got to do a deeper dive. Yeah. But, uh, I've been doing it long enough. I can usually just tell yeah. you almost to the penny without doing any of that. Zillow, Redfin, you know, it's not it's not bad to look at those uh, estimates that they come up with. Um, none of it is very scientific because they don't go into the house. They don't. They really don't know anything other than what yeah, they yeah. stay so on assessors' record. reports. So yeah public records and and um they're relating the six hundred thousand dollar house to the four million dollar house and they're frankly they're not the same house as you can uh you know there are neighborhoods here in in new england where uh, not all the houses are the same um they uh you can be in a neighborhood where you can have a multi-million dollar home next to a, a modest home because the neighborhood is changing and it hasn't gotten there yet. Um, but uh, I look at it from what I learned from my appraisal friend, and there's 17 ways to use PAP to uh, determine a value. And, you know, it's like pick one or, or pick a bunch of them. It's both a science and an art. The science is the comps and someone with your experience can kind of do that because you know, you know, you don't even know what you're doing, but your brain's got 40 years of experience. We're talking about, you know, uh, somebody who's selling their first home, you know, they're ready to go to their second home. The funny thing is on valuations until the market speaks, you have no idea what the house is worth or the yeah. condo or the land. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. Because it's the buyer who determines the value. We've you all know, seen houses that we thought were overpriced, and then you got overbids. And we also have seen houses that we thought were priced right, and no one shows up to the open house. Yeah. That I know that we have a lot of agents who watch this, and one of the ways that I learned how to price houses, well, first it's BPOs, and I don't do those anymore. Broker priced opinions, they don't pay you enough, and they don't pay you sometimes. But they were a good way to go out and, and um, quickly try and decide what a valuation is on something. But going to open houses... If you're a young agent, go to a lot of open houses, take the nice brochure and walk out. And when you get back to your car, write down what you think it's worth and how long it's going to take to sell it and then pay attention. You know, after a while, you get pretty good at that because it's a learned skill. Um, what are the prerequisites when seeking a house loan? I think there's, you know, go ahead. What was the question? What are the prerequisites in getting a house loan? A house loan? Yeah. I mean, other than your credit score, uh, get all income, together. Income, debt. Yeah. Your income and your, your expenses. Really sit down and do that. Do it with a financial planner. Do it with uh, an accountant. Do it with your 
your your friend Joey who you your know, mortgage your mortgage broker will dig your in mortgage deep. broker that's yeah. that's the only person yeah. you really need so one of the nuances that uh, on that is like when you're when your credit gets pulled there's a day you know there is a point or two that that comes off because it's it's a, a full credit report if you have three or four full credit reports during a what is it a week period of time i have no idea um i i believe it's a there's a specific period of time if you go to three or four lenders which you should anyway um the, you only get dinged once for those credit reports so that's that's just being a smart consumer you know talk to more than one bank don't go to the big banks go to a bank that that cares about you somebody that you might recognize you know in another month or so um uh, which the, my initial contribution uh, in Massachusetts, it's a little different than other places. We do earnest and uh, because we're a two-step process. Um, in other states, is it just deposit money or is there two times that you put in money? Um, I've only, I mean, I've got licenses in four states, but I've really only sold in two. And back when I sold in Florida, it was just one one agreement, uh, it was literally called offer and purchase and sale back then. Yeah. I don't know what it is now. Yeah. And uh, you'd put a thousand dollars down and you know, if it was a million dollar property and you're putting 5% down, you had to come up with $49,000 within the next hour if the offer was accepted. Sure. So, I would say every state is different. Yeah. Again, have your, your finances in a row. So when you get to that point, you can do what you want. I, I want to switch gears for a moment here and talk uh, specifically about Castle's Luxury and Castle's Unlimited. And the uh, um, that has been a brand for what, some 30 years now? Uh, well, Castle's Unlimited was started in 1985. So that would be what? 95. 30. 36, 37, 40, 38 years. years. Yeah. It's something like that. 39 years. Yeah. I, I it wasn't showing my fingers because I was actually like counting on, on my fingers. Yeah. So, um, and Castles was a trademark. We probably registered around 1990. And with EXP, uh, we started a group called Castles Luxury. And that's about 1,600 agents now. And that's um, now becoming part of a, a platform for Castles Magazine and all the agent attraction tools that I've come up with. And the Castles Unlimited team is now a standard team at EXP and is, is national. We've got agents signing up in other states. So, um, yeah, I mean, Castles Luxury is probably the largest group of, of luxury agents in the world at this point. And now Castle's Unlimited team. Uh, I mean, that's the goal is to have it be the number one team at EXP. And EXP is large enough, so it might just be the largest team in the world. But that'll probably take a year. That's, that's the goal this year. Last year's goal was to make Castle's luxury what it is. So, yeah. Cool. And 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 it's honestly it's the EXP. It's not the business model. It's a little bit of the technology that actually is just off the shelf from Mark Zuckerberg and and Meta Workplace. It used to be uh, Facebook. Well, what was it? What is it now? It's Meta Workplace. So it was Facebook Workplace. But um, it's it's the network. Ninety thousand yeah. agents. Yeah. Right. Just saw the uh, the magazine. Where is it? Mm -hmm. Ninety ninety thousand. That just yeah. came out yesterday. That's the mm -hmm. news. And then today, the the big news is, and this is where, uh, if you can say stuff about the stock and stuff, when they finally realize, like Apple is not a consumer company, Apple is a tech company. EXP is not a real estate company. It's a tech company. Right. Uh, so we have 
company called Verbella. Mm -hmm. We used to have to download software onto our laptops or whatever to, to run into the EXP world concierge services. And now it's, it's on the internet. So no software downloads. And today I think it's sure. a launch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the technology, I, I was talking to another uh, business owner here in the Boston area. He owns uh, Boston Pads is, is what he owns. And he was saying that technology is everything. That if you don't have technology, and I know that you're, you know, uh, what did you say? A, a pen and a sign is all you need to be a real estate agent? No, you need, um, yeah, well, business card, a yard sign. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, and, and I know that's kind of cavalier and it's it's throws it off because you sell houses and people come to the open houses because they saw about them in the newspaper or online or something. Well, they saw they saw it online. There's yeah. No, nobody's buying buying a house from a newspaper ad anymore. I think I think there's old school people. What's a new, what's a newspaper? When was the last time you picked up a newspaper? Well, uh, you know I'm about to have um, knee surgery, so I've been in a doctor's office, and just last week I read a real newspaper, wow. but it was because I was in the doctor's office. Old school. So like like this magazine. Uh, I think the only reason. I'm holding on to it, and I and I will look at. I I like Jewel, so there's an article here about Jewel. Okay, there you go. I don't know, I, I, you know, and that that goes back to there's so much information around um, who should you work with and and all of that. Work with people you like and trust. Work with people that have answers to your questions, and if they don't and they don't know, they'll say, "Hey, listen, let me find out for you," because. Um, there's all strange kinds of things that happen. Although buying and selling a house is kind of the same thing over and over. All the so let me ask you a question, Larry. You've been with the XP for what a couple of years? Feels like that about that. Well, I came in in January. I thought it was a year and a year and some months. Yeah. Well. Okay. I. I. I I'll. I'll. I'll say one year then. Uh, I, th I think it might be longer, but regardless, uh, has it has it changed the way you do business at all? Uh, me personally, yeah. yes, absolutely. Ah. Uh, well, um, first of all, it, with all the other places I worked, I had to figure out everything. I had to get my my website together. I had to get my CRM together. There were products available out there. But EXP is the only place where it, when I walked in the door uh, and signed up, I was given all of this technology. Yeah, I have a fee for that, but it's not very much. And it's considerably less than uh, what I was paying when I was being supported by other companies uh, that were charging me more. Um, so Okay, but that's dollars and cents. It hasn't changed your outlook and anything like that? Uh, I have a great deal more confidence in my system doing what it's supposed to do. One of the key things in, in any level of success is consistency. And this one is kind of a plug and play. You know, you can you can manipulate it, but it's already set up with all the right things that if you actually plug in and 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 do what you're supposed to do, open up your your database every day, it tells you what to do. Do that stuff. And in that way, Jim, my life has changed because I'm not running around thinking I have to talk to 200 people this week, handing out 100 cards. You know what? I have. So you're more you're more focused. Exactly. Um, fewer steps. And that's K and that's the KV core website that you're talking about. Yeah. You? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And um, I, I did some modifications on it, but not much and not near as much as I had to do with all the other crap I was doing before. So in that regard, I'm, uh, I'm thrilled. I'm really not looking for more. I get calls. Everybody does. If you sell houses, other companies will call you. I'm not looking anywhere else. I'm uh, I'm thrilled with 
um, the more than one way to make a living by selling houses. Like you, you mentioned the stock and there's a variety of other um, yeah. options that EXP offers that I'm availing myself of. Um, yep. And it, it's like a forced quiet savings um, in some way the stock program is for me. Um, but I, I think that that uh, consistency, having good people around you. Now, here, here's one of the complaints about EXP is they don't have a virtual office. So you're not anywhere near people as much as we used to be when we, we would go to an office. And what are you, what are you talking about? I'm you, talking you, about... You know, you know we have an office, right? I, I know we have an office. You, you've had that same office for 30 years, right? And right um, in there of, well, of Newton, at, 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 at least, yeah, yeah, and and in a great there's a, there's a lot of physical offices. Um, I I don't think people really use offices like they used to. That's the point. You know, the the pandemic kind of made people a little wary about getting into uh, close proximity. Right. And, you know, certain months of the year, I, I mean, I, I think I heard on the news last night now there's measles going around or something. You know, it's all, all this. Because things. people don't want to get inoculations because well, somehow you're being manipulated by. But re regardless, do you really need an office? And the answer is probably not. Um, but I, but I, the I, one thing I was saying, Jim, is is the camaraderie. The talking, you know, about what's going on and, and who's around you in real estate, you really want to be around good people. Because well, of we've replaced it with with Zoom meetings, which yeah. allow people yeah. to um, not have an excuse not to show up. Right. <laughs> right. I've been on way too many Zoom meetings where the, the people won't show themselves. And and with the metaverse technology, uh, now you can have even less of a reason because you can show up in in your birthday suit and 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 still still look perfectly fine at the meeting. Yeah, a anything below the Zoom level it doesn't matter what you're wearing. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about the metaverse. You know, as huh. a, as a uh, Avatar, yeah, yeah, yeah. You I, can be in, you can be in your bathrobe and slippers during the meeting, and it's fine. I mean, it's actually pretty cool technology, and yeah. it's just going to get better and better. Yeah, yeah. As as it will and as it does, you know, it'll be the technology, but it still comes down to uh, you're talking to people, and people have. Uh, needs concerns. It's still a big financial deal, um, and you need to take it seriously um, because they do. It really does um, change your lives when you when you move from one house to another. But I think there are people who I gave you all those questions. Where are the questions? <laughs> Give me one. Huh? Give me uh, one. Give you, me one you, question. You getting bored, Jim? Um, What's the ceiling on my home buying budget? Are we on the brink of property Not market? those questions. Yeah. My questions. Um, um, uh, what's the <laughs> ceiling? The ceiling is don't spend all your money. That's the ceiling. You know, keep some savings. Uh, but here's a better one. Are we on the brink of a property market turndown? I say no. What are you asking? Are prices going to go down? Yeah. That's what the question is. Uh, I don't know. Doubt it. I see two things anecdotally. I, I, I know that 30 plus years ago, one of the brokers in, in our area was interviewed for the newspaper and they asked her if the prices were going to keep going up. And she said, oh, God, no. And that's, that's not possible. Look at these prices. $200,000 for a house. That's a million forward today. No, it's well, yeah, probably close. Yeah, and then you tear it down and build a four million dollar house. Well, that's Newton. That's the Newton market. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, you know. So, um, no, it's, it's unlikely. 
you know, and 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 look at all the people, you know. So I've I've been doing this long enough. To, I've heard all the stories having, you know, managed so many brokers, and I would hear from them, uh, "Oh, my buyer said he's going to wait because the price is going to come down." <laughs> right? Famous la famous last words, right? Yeah, but but again, in the last, and then they never get into the market, yeah. or the people that say, oh, I haven't found the right house yet. And they don't buy because they haven't found the right house yet. Not realizing that they're never gonna find the perfect house anyway. Even brand your, new. Your, your budget is, you know, your budget, find something that you can afford, improve it, you know, yeah. adv advance your finances that way. And then you can move up in the future. Yeah. Or you, you think you bought, too small a house, but then the kids leave, you know, and now now you don't have to downsize. Yeah, yeah. And most I, of the houses we're today. building now, we're putting in uh, options for elevators, so people never have to leave. Right. Cheaper right. to put in an elevator than to buy another That's house or go into a care facility. Yeah, yeah. I want to go back to that uh, early question, how many houses should, should you look at? I want to look at it from another side. You've been in open houses. I have been in open houses. When somebody walks through the door, you kind of almost know that they know this is the right house for us because the whole demeanor about it. And the other thing that always, always, always happens, almost infallibly, uh, infallible, is they go outside after doing the house and they look back at it and they talk with their agent for about 15 minutes. They're figuring out, you know, different kinds of things. It's, you know, when you, you have found the house. Um, sellers, you know, it's not always sure when you, if you find your right buyer, but I think a buyer knows if it's the right house for them. And I know all the places I've ever owned. I knew right away. You've lived in more places. You've built more places for yourself. So, you know, have you loved all of them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> there we have it. <laughs> I think there are uh, uh, another... Uh, Only mistake I made is I sold some of them. I shouldn't have sold any of them. Should have kept them and rented them. That's the, that's the, um, that's the takeaway. Yeah, Here, here's kind of a stupid question, but it's it's one of the top Google questions. How much time should I anticipate for my house to find a new owner? Pricing my house to, to find what? A new, a new owner. owner. You mean how long is it going to take me to sell my house? Yeah, kind of. That's a question? That is. I don't know. Could they be, said it in a different could way. Could be a minute, could be a year. I and I said price and condition. Obviously, if this is an AI, it's really not very intelligent. <laughs> um, you price your property correctly, and um, it's in good condition. You're going to sell it. It's going to these be these days, yes. Yeah, um, and if it's not selling, then it's not priced right. Oh, uh, here's a here's a good one because we're just coming into that period of time now, and it's really changed over the last since uh, since COVID. Is there an optimal season or period to put my house on the market? Yeah, now it's always now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's a tr um, trick question. There are there are some tougher times because you you limit your market right around the holidays. Yeah, don't don't put it on the day that the uh, World Health Organization declares a worldwide pandemic. That would that would not be the best day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The day do it, do it, it been the best. Do it day. a few months. Do it, do it after. Six yeah. Months. yeah, yeah. Hey, what haven't we talked about yet? Well, uh, I gave you a bunch of questions. We didn't talk about any of them. Well, we did. Did you lose them? Way. Do I have to ask myself? Let me get my questions here. <laughs> we did. We did. Uh, Larry. All that. I'm always of the opinion, uh, you know, a show all about me is not an interesting show. <laughs> I like the idea that we were answering questions that, that uh, uh, people ask. Uh, 
if you're, again, if you're a real estate agent, if you're uh, selling and you're looking for a listing agent, if your agent doesn't know who's going to walk in and who's going to buy this house, uh, you need to find another agent. Now, sometimes you can get surprised with that. Some new person shows up, but usually um, that your agent should know because they have to market to that person. And that's really what the, the agent's job is to get as many people in through the door and looking at the property. Um, and um, Okay, so here's a good question for me. Okay. What should I be asking you? Uh, number nine. I, I don't have it in front of me. Um, <laughs> yeah, did you read that? Why do you think about all the lawsuits being filed against realtors? Why do you think? You want me to answer my question? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, so um, the lawsuits are, um, well, they're a money grab for sure. Yeah. Uh, obviously. Uh, the NAR and uh, whoever else was being fleeced, uh, I think it was anywhere, which is Caldwell and Century 21. And I think Remax settled early and, KW was part of the group that didn't settle or whatever. Um, they just did a terrible job of defending themselves. They, they should have literally taken the jury to school. Yeah. People don't understand how hard realtors work. They don't understand the value we bring to a transaction really the value that we bring to their lives in a way, because buying the wrong property when it can cost, you know, any mistake can cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars or being able to negotiate proper, properly to win a bidding war to get the right price. I used to say to, you know, let's say there were times when things were a little slower and you didn't have to pay up over the asking price just to get into the property. And I'd say to people, you know, what, what, how would you feel if you lost this house? Man. That was, that was my go-to question because they would say, Oh, what should we offer? Should we offer this? Should we offer that? I know they're asking this and they probably want that, but we'd like to negotiate. And I would just say, you know, what is going to be the outcome for you and your happiness if you lose this house, that puts them in a whole different perspective because now right. it's the takeaway. They don't have that house necessarily as even an option. Someone else bought their house. End of story. Now you got to find another house. Yeah. Um, That's the economic principle of scarcity. But what has happened with this lawsuit is they're now saying these sellers are saying, oh, I had to pay for the buyer's broker. So the person representing the buyer was paid by me. And that's just not fair. The buyer should pay for their own broker. Well, a lot of mortgage products, you can't, you can't do that. The buyer cannot, unless I have money just to take out of pocket, they can't, work it into the into the loan so therefore they can't even buy the house basically they can't afford to right because uh, that two, two or two and a half percent is is in the deal and yeah. and they and they do want to work with their buyer i mean their broker their buyer sure. their buyer agent they, they sure. want to feel like they have someone on their side of the table so eventually what's going to happen is there's going to be a new agreement that's going to be signed initial fingerprinted drop of blood goes in the file says yes i'm a seller yes this is my property yes i was willing to pay the uh buyer's uh broker um uh, from the proceeds that would have normally came to me and i understand that they you know they were representing the the buyer and i'm okay with it and why am i okay with it because my house sat on the market for a year 
because I was unwilling to pay the buyer broker. And I said to my broker, how am I going to get the house sold? This is yeah. terrible. It's been on the market for a year. You go, well, just offer a co-broke fee. Yeah. Like the old days, like last year. Yeah. 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 And then it sells. So well, it, it's just a swinging of the pendulum. It, it'll come back. Yeah. And the lawsuits will be a thing of the past. And eventually the courts won't listen to them anymore because it's just nonsensical. You know, it well, is what, nonsensical. What were they, they were, and you're they absolutely like right. Five billion dollars or something. And right. that's just in the state of Missouri. Yeah, it, it the, the NIR screwed the pooch on this. They they were not um, properly. Well, the it, NAR it right. and the NAR has nothing to do with any of this anyway. They 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 just have a target on the back because they've yeah. got you know so many members. The more members you have, the deeper they think your your pockets are. But the NAR has plenty of problems right now, so. Yeah, this may, this actually might be the least of their problems. <laughs> anyway, um, it's been a wonderful. I think there's more. There's more questions. We're going into overtime here. Hey, but wait. okay. So 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 here's actually a really good question. You should have asked this. Number two. So there were reasons why you originally joined EXP. Do you plan to stay and are you staying for the same reasons that you originally joined for? Now, isn't that, that's a well thought out question, right? That's a multiple choice. You know, why did it come over? Um, better splits, um, make more money, uh, better technology. That's why I came over. Um, you can't make funny faces for my opinion. Better, better splits. Yeah, I, th I think your split was the same with me prior to EXP. Um, you're going to argue with me. I had a um, um, I had to pay more with my other firm. Oh, you're talking I about oh Keller Williams, yes. So try not to be so smart and be stupid at the no, same. No, I'm saying before you came to EXP, you were Castles Unlimited. I know what your split was because yeah, yeah, oh. and it was slightly higher. Not the split. The split was but the cap was different i used the, the wrong cap the, yes if you yeah I used don't do the, the, the enough production no with all those little incremental fees it, it came out to about almost to the penny i know because i well the question was for me it wasn't actually for you okay okay but but good, good. answer yeah. um so so the reason um I brought the team over was actually to um, to take advantage of everything that this publicly traded behemoth had to offer, and and it didn't become a behemoth just because they they were um, you know technologically advanced or anything. There was a business model there that was very unique and very forward thinking. So that was the main reason. The and and yes, I, I would stay because actually I wrote a, a third book. It's probably going to be titled uh, Three Years to Retirement," and and it talks about how when you come to a company like EXP, you should, really should stay a number of years to really take advantage of um, appreciation in the stock. Let's say not a great time to talk about that since the stock hasn't been doing that great. But, you know, building a rev share downline, in my case, uh, finding ways to leverage these uh, tools. And I, and I kind of brought it up before, Meta Workplace. It's off, it's off the shelf. But when you take 90,000 agents and put it into this, this tool, then you can blow something up. And that's what I've been able to do. And it took, took a lot of work. And it took a lot of creativity to do it, but now I'm seeing the next level, which is team building. And so it's first a group, luxury group, building that on the platform. And now it's, as EXP calls it, a standard team. And we're taking that national and we're opening up in other states. We're not charging any fees. And there's discounts like with EXP luxury, 
the agent can save $1,500 a year off of the, those fees, little things like that. So the goals have changed, but eXp has allowed, um, allowed for these things to actually happen because it has all these tools and uh, a very unique business model. Well, and the opposite side of that is also true, Jim. It's not for everybody. If you are not an entrepreneurial type person, you might flounder in this because uh, while there are tools and education, um, it's expected that you want to do better and you're going to be proactive in doing that. I think EXP in a way is for everyone that's in the business. But honestly, agents that are already slaying it in the market, I mean, they're just going to step in and go, oh, my God, I'm making so much more money. I've got so many more tools. Uh, this is this is like night and day. So EXP, I look at it as being a very um, basic branding you know they 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 will they really don't go out of their way to explain what what is the XP. I think we have figured it out. You know with the exponential files. The EXP was exponential, expand, uh, experience. I mean, there's so many very positive words that start with the three letters EXP. So that's you know part of it right there. But they don't like get into slogans and stuff like that. They let their agents make their own marketing, their own yeah. slogans. This is the platform. This is the business model for a creative entrepreneur to build on top of. And, this, and the sky is the limit. Thank you so much, Jim Lowenstern, CEO of- Thank Thailand. you so much, Larry Lawfer. <laughs> Great interview. And uh, on the exponential files, on the exponential files. Uh, when is your show? Thursdays? Is it still Thursday? Whenever I feel like it these days. Yeah. I, I had a nice conversation with a top agent that just came to EXP in San Antonio today, and I'll probably have him on the show. Yeah, I did a Zoom call with him. He was wearing his his uh, cowboy hat. Yeah. So I thought we haven't had a cowboy hat interview for a while. Now. For a while. <laughs> Anyway, hey, uh, great uh, seeing you. Thanks for being a guest. Tune in next week when I'll have uh, somebody who's probably not as interesting as Jim, 